from Kansas. Mr. President, uh, I ask unanimous consent uh, to enter into a colloquy with uh, my Senate colleagues. Without objection. Mr. President, uh, thank you very much. Uh, entrepreneurs and new businesses are vital to the strength of the United States economy. Uh, we need to be a competitive country in which we have great success uh, in creating jobs in America. Between 1980 and 2005, startups, companies, uh, less than five years old accounted for nearly all the net new jobs created in our country. New firms create an average of approximately three million jobs each year. In order to create jobs for Americans, we need to create an environment where entrepreneurs are free to pursue their ideas, start businesses, and hire American workers. Now, why is this important? This is important, obviously, for purposes of creating the opportunity for all Americans to pursue the American dream. It's important for us to have the ability to put food on our families' tables and save for our kids' education, to save for our own retirement. And it's important because at a time in our nation in which our fiscal condition of the federal government is so serious, so much out of balance. We are spending so many more dollars than we take in. The deficit is holding back the growth of our country. It's important, this fact, these facts are important because at this point in time, because of our country's fiscal condition, we have an inability to grow the economy and we have seen little evidence that the administration and Congress are willing to address our fiscal issues. I raise these, these facts because we have to act now in order to create jobs in this country. And the way to do that is to create an entrepreneurial and innovation environment in which people, Americans who have ideas, uh, want to take a product to market. Uh, in the process of pursuing their success, they put other Americans to work. We need to create the environment in which that can happen. And in the process of creating the, the benefits of new jobs in America, we will have a better fiscal condition than the one we find ourselves in today and prolong and avoid the chances that the United States become another Greece or other so southern European country. A number of us in the Senate who believe that we can work together to accomplish this have come together and enter entered into negotiations and created legislation based upon information provided by the Kauffman Foundation on Entrepreneurship in Kansas City, as well as the President's uh, Council on Jobs and Competitiveness. And on the floor today with me are several of those colleagues, the Senator from uh, Virginia, Senator Warner, and I gathered together our thoughts uh, several months ago and introduced uh, legislation called the Startup Act. Also on the floor this, uh, this afternoon is Senator Coons of Delaware. Uh, he and uh, the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Rubio, uh, introduced the AGREE Act, uh, designed to create the AGREE Act, designed to put some things in place that most members of Congress agreed upon to grow the economy and create jobs. The four of us then came together with an idea and have now introduced uh, Startup 2.0. Today, House of, uh, members of the House of Representatives introduced companion legislation this morning in a bipartisan effort, and so we now have a bipartisan, bicameral piece of legislation that we believe is important to the, to the country. Uh, we believe it is important to individual citizens, and we believe it's important in the ability for us to have the economic growth necessary uh, to begin the process of making our country fiscally sound again. This legislation has a number of components related to the tax code, related to the regulatory environment, related to the global battle for talent, uh, related to the ability for us to take um, the money that we spend, the taxpayer dollars at universities in, in conducting research and to encourage that that money be spent in a way for research that is able to be used in bringing new products to market, in commercialization, and to create an environment in which uh, states across the country can, can demonstrate their interest and willingness in pursuing on an entrepreneurial environment so that entrepreneurs and innovators find the place to build their companies. Uh, and I, it's an honor to, uh, to, to be here this afternoon to highlight this legislation, to encourage our other colleagues to join us, and to uh, approach this in a way that says we believe that this is something more than just introducing a bill, something that is important not just as a symbol that we're working together, but we're of the belief that this is legislation that can follow the JOBS Act that was passed by 
this Congress, signed by this President several months ago, that we can follow on with legislation that will increase the chances that entrepreneurship is alive and well and America retains its competitive place in a global economy. Let me uh, ask my colleagues if, they, if they'd like to join in this discussion, and I, I would uh, yield to, to the gentleman, the, the Senator from Virginia. Well, Mr. President. <coughs> the Senator from Virginia. I'd like to thank my friend, uh, the Senator from Kansas, for his uh, leadership on this issue. This is something that um, he and I have spent a lot of time working on, as I know, the Senator from Delaware, Senator from Florida, and I know we're joined now, uh, our friend, the uh, Senator from Missouri as well. Um, we are all new senators. Uh, we've said before uh, when we unveiled this, we didn't get the memo that we're supposed to take presidential election years off. We still think uh, the needs of our country uh, ought to trump um, election year politicking and uh, think this is one of those spaces where we can find that common ground. I spent 20 years as an entrepreneur and a funder of startup businesses. And everything in my experience validates what uh, Senator Moran has talked about, that, you know, Candidly, the facts show 80% of all the new jobs created in America in the last 20 years have come from startup businesses. They're not all tech businesses. I think about Under Armour, which is right up the road uh, in Maryland, uh, close to our friends in Delaware. Uh, and there are certain key things that every startup business needs. They need access to capital. They need access to talent. They need access to new ideas. They need to make sure we've got a stable regulatory environment that's not overly burdensome. And in each way, we move the ball in this legislation, uh, both that we've passed and that we're working on right now. I want to, uh, Senator Moran mentioned the Jobs Act, which really looked at access to capital issues, how we can perhaps allow companies access to the public markets in a cleaner way. I want to commend the presiding officer as well. He took the lead on a whole new area of, of uh, fundraising around crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, using the tools of the internet, uh, in effect democratizing the ability to, um, uh, to raise capital. Uh, this legislation, Startup 2.0, uh, we take on uh, a series of other issues. One of the issues is the question of talent. Every country in the world competes for talent. We attract some of the best talent in the world to come to the world-class universities we have. Oftentimes we then train them in science, technology, engineering, and math with graduate degrees. I wish we could fill all those slots in American universities with native-born Americans. But we don't have enough, and consequently we train best and brightest in the world, then send them home to start their businesses. I can tell you, in, in Virginia, where we are proud to have a, uh, a vibrant high-tech community, an entrepreneurial community, literally a third of all our high-tech firms in Northern Virginia, one of the founders are a first-generation American. If we had the same immigration policies 20 years ago that we have today, we wouldn't have had that kind of explosive growth, particularly we had all across America in the 90s from technology. So I, I want to ask my colleague, the senator from Delaware, who a state that uh, uh, punches above its weight, small state, but a state with great universities, a state that's got a rich uh, entrepreneurial climate as well, uh, about you know, what got you involved. I know you've got a background in business as well uh, on this issue, and I know you want to share as well some of the aspects of Startup 2.0. Well, thank you, Senator Warner. Uh, Mr. President, I'm honored to join uh, with the good senator from Kansas, the senator from Missouri, my friend from Virginia, uh, in speaking today in a colloquy, a bipartisan colloquy that is also part of a bicameral process uh, that is trying to send a signal uh, to the American people, uh, to our markets, to our competitors, uh, that we understand that just because we happen to be in an election year uh, doesn't mean that our competitors in China and India and Russia and Europe and in other parts of the world, in Africa and in other places where there's emerging markets or in places where we have well-developed competitors, they don't take this year off. The American people expect that since we're still drawing a salary, we should still be making progress and we should still be trying to meet the needs of a growing economy that needs to grow faster. And so as Senator Moran referenced previously, last November, uh, Senator Rubio of Florida and I came together to put a package called the AGREE Act uh, before this Senate. Uh, we were pleased that a number of the provisions in that first AGREE Act actually have subsequently become law. Uh, one, to ease the path uh, for IPOs, initial public offerings for uh, high potential, high growth companies. Another, uh, through executive order, to strengthen intellectual property protection. Uh, and we're hopeful the Senate will consider another provision that dealt with bonus depreciation, uh, which is another way to help make uh, investments in equipment for small businesses. And on top of that, uh, Senators Rubio and I have now teamed up with Senator Moran and Senator Warner 
uh, to take some of the remaining provisions of the AGREE Act and add them in with your Startup Act and now make an improved and broader and stronger Startup 2.0. The pieces that we brought to the party uh, were eliminating the per country caps for employment-based immigrant visas and making permanent the exemption of certain capital gains so investors can provide financial stability to qualified startups. There's a lot of good ideas in this bill. There's a lot of different ways in which it tackles the issues uh, that my colleagues have already spoken to. Immigration, uh, retaining high promise entrepreneurial folks who've come and learned in the United States, uh, moving the inventions and innovations on American college campuses to the marketplace more predictably, more swiftly, providing tax incentives uh, for startup businesses uh, and putting things in the tax code that strengthen our welcoming environment for entrepreneurship and regulatory relief. Uh, Senator Moran really took the lead in making a possible a provision in this bill that provides some uh, regulatory relief for startup businesses. In all, these provisions, I think, make for a terrific package, thus the moniker 2.0. It's already attracted uh, some other folks to join us. Um, before I hand the floor over to the Senator from Missouri, I just want to comment on what I think that means. There are trillions of dollars of capital sitting on the sidelines. American corporations have more money sitting on their balance sheets not invested in moving our economy forward than at almost any time in modern history. And that's because they're not sure that this body, that the Congress of the United States, can tackle the very real financial and competitiveness challenges in front of us. And something about the symbolism of what's on the floor today, the agriculture bill, the farm bill, and a bill that we took up and passed just a few weeks ago, the transportation bill, I think is at times lost. The average American sees in the news the fighting, the disagreement, the inability to come together. When in fact, two fairly broad, strong, and important bills, the farm bill and the transportation bill, were passed through committee by strong folks, Senator Boxer of California and Senator Inhofe of Oklahoma, Senator Stabenow, of Michigan and Senator Roberts of Kansas. These are folks from both parties with significant differences in their views, but they managed to hammer out these bills, the transportation bill and the farm bill. And this Startup 2.0, I just want to thank Senators Moran and, and Warner and Rubio for joining with me and the four of us being able to put this together and put it on the floor today. And to the good Senator from Missouri, a freshman in the Senate, but a man of great seasoning and experience in the House and in public service, uh, we're grateful that you've joined us as a co-sponsor of this bill. And uh, I'd welcome you, the Senator from Missouri, to speak for a few minutes about how you see this contributing to positive progress for our recovery. Well, I, I do think there are those things we can agree on, and, and I'm pleased to be here with my colleagues. I'm glad to join the three of you, and Senator Rubio is one of the uh, co-sponsors of this bill that you all have crafted and put together. Uh, you know, good energy policy, good tax policy, good regulatory policy uh, are really important to the future, but there are things we can do right now, even outside of those bigger debates that we need to have as well, that are in this bill. Uh, you know, who would have thought uh, Senator Moran brought, the, brought this poster to the floor uh, uh, that Great Britain would become a real competitor for us as a better place to do business. And I've talked to more than one American business lately that's actually changed uh, their worldwide headquarters and their corporate structure uh, to Britain instead of the United States of America. Uh, and then we've got another, uh, this one is great entrepreneurs are are Great Britain, I think entrepreneurs are still the United States of America, but this ad would suggest otherwise. Uh, your next big idea, Canada. Uh, you know, Canada's a great trading partner. They're a neighbor of ours, they're a friend of ours, but I, I don't think we would have thought uh, a decade ago that these countries would be repositioning themselves. And that's happened as well as I think we haven't kept up like we should and we could with things like the Startup Act, but these companies are, these countries are putting themselves in a position where they understand that private sector job growth is critical, uh, that government can do some things to encourage that, but government doesn't create very many private sector jobs. Uh, I, I believe this bill, one of the reasons I decided to, to co-sponsor the Startup Act uh, 2.0, the second version uh, of the Startup Act, is I think it does some of the things we begin to need to do. Um, 75% of all U.S. engineering and technology firms in the last decade, uh, the decade that we have really good numbers on, the one that ended just a few years, uh, that ended uh, really in, in the numbers I have are 1995 to 2005, 75% of the engineering and technology startups uh, were started by people who were born in another country. 
Uh, and this bill just simply creates a visa program that allows entrepreneurs who have good ideas and frankly have some money to go along with those good ideas to come to the United States of America and start those jobs, to take advantage of our great workforce, to take advantage of uh, the position that we have to, uh, to be able to, to send products all over the world and to do that uh, here. Uh, this act also uh, requires that uh, we have a true cost-benefit analysis of rules and regulations. Uh, the, the federal government Last year, there, of the 66 rules that cost more than $100 million, uh, only 18 of them had what you could really describe as a cost-benefit analysis. Uh, and there are lots of things that would be fine to do, but if the cost to the economy, if the cost to jobs, if the cost to families uh, is greater than the benefit, uh, we shouldn't do them. And so this bill says that, that says let's go ahead uh, and let's not let uh, the cost of something O overwhelm the benefit to the economy or, the, or, or become the negative impact on the economy. Uh, Long-term investment in this act uh, with startups would have some exemption from the capital gains. So you, you're risking a lot of money with a startup and this is saying, okay, we want to raise the reward uh, quotient of that risk so that we encourage people uh, to take the risk. You know, if you're doing a startup, the odds are pretty high that that money may not ever come back. Uh, and so whatever you can do to encourage that that money be put on the table, that those jobs uh, be created. Uh, in 2009, uh, 651 startups were created with university research involved as a component. Uh, and this just further opens the doors of, of grant dollars that are already available, of uh, of uh, federal research and development funds to be even more open to a university partner as part of that private sector effort. So, so I think we've got to be focused on uh, opportunity for families, opportunity for individuals. Uh, how, who really creates the jobs in America? Small business creates the jobs in America. Startups create the jobs in America. Uh, and so, Senator Moran, I'm, I'm pleased to be here standing with you on the floor. and. Uh, the next big idea is the biggest idea for the last couple hundred years, uh, which is the United States of America intends to be a competitive leader in the world. And what do we need to do as members of the United States Senate to see that that happens? And uh, I'm glad you and uh, Senator Warner and Senator Kuhn, Senator Rubio are leading this effort. I'm glad to join you in it and glad to be here on the floor with you today. Very much appreciate the Senator from Missouri's uh, his remarks, but his sponsorship of this legislation. Let me highlight something that he pointed out, which is in the short time that the, those of us on the floor today have been in the United States Senate, about 14 months, seven countries have adopted new laws to attract entrepreneurs. We have not. Listen to this fact. A recent report from the World Bank shows that America has slipped in the rankings in terms of startup friendliness from first to 13th. This is about, while there's provisions in here about visas for those who are foreign born, this is very much about American jobs. This is about the opportunity for someone to start a company here and hire Americans. And if you happen to be someone who is foreign born, but highly educated in science, technology, and engineering, and entrepreneurial with money who wants to invest in the U.S. economy and agree to put people to work, we're saying that our doors of, of the United States of America are open for business for purposes of hiring United States citizens. Uh, it is an important component and we do not want to lose this battle. As we see, these are ads from U.S. publications in which entrepreneurs are being lured to places outside the United States to start their companies. When I visited with an entrepreneur recently, they said, you know, we couldn't get the, 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 the person we needed to hire to work at our company because they couldn't get a visa, they were foreign born. So we hired them, but we put them in our, our plant in Canada. We put them in our facility in Dublin. And the fear is, the, the concern there is more than just those number of jobs that were not then created in the United States. It means that people who are entrepreneurial are now in Dublin and in Toronto where they're making decisions not uh, uh, just about today's, uh, what they have to do today for a check, but when they have an idea about starting a business, they're outside the United States, and we lose the benefit of that job growth. 
Let me also say something else about this legislation. It's designed to, to in fact, an engineer, an entrepreneurial engineer told me that to get a plane to fly, there's two forces at work, uh, thrust and drag. And too many times, in my view, Congress spends its, its efforts in creating new laws, more spending. It, it promotes the thrust. What we're doing here is, is reducing the drag, increasing the chances that a new business will succeed. And before our time expires, let me again uh, return to the, to the senator from Virginia. Again, commend you, Senator from Kansas, for his comments. And you know, just, uh, I, like you, um, quite fond of Canada. Actually, my mom's family is all from Canada. But it is remarkable. Canada, over the last few years, has aggressively sought out worldwide talent. I guess I'd ask the senator from Kansas whether he thinks it really is good policy that what we do now, and let's again make very clear, this is about growing American jobs because we have more job openings in the advanced fields of science, technology, engineering, and math than there are American citizens applying for those jobs. But I guess I'd ask the senator from Kansas whether it would make sense, if we thought about this from a national security standpoint, would it make sense for us to take a, a let's take for example, a, a Chinese lieutenant, send him to West Point, expose him to everything that we have in terms of our national security ideas, and then send him home? I, I guess I'd ask the senator from Kansas whether we thought that would be Nash, good national security policy, since in effect that's what is our current national immigration policy on an equally important front, I think, in terms of job creation and economic uh, activity. Well, Mr. President, the, the answer to that in Kansas is that lacks common sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. There's no good judgment. Uh, and that's a point I would make in a more broad way is the, the provisions of Startup 2.0 are mostly about common sense, things that would make sense to the people of my state and the people of the state of Virginia, who if you looked at a problem and say, how can we solve it? How can we create jobs, grow the economy? They'd say, these things just make common sense. And that's what this legislation is about. In my view, I would guess that 80% of our colleagues here in the United States Senate, at least, would be supportive of the provisions in this legislation. And I think uh, the, the senators on the floor this afternoon and, and others are out to prove that uh, when there is broad support for common sense ideas, we still are in a legislative body that can accomplish things. And that, as the, as the senator from Virginia is fond of saying, we didn't get the memo that says we don't work uh, during an election year. The American people expect us to make uh, the necessary uh, accomplishments to grow the economy, to put Americans to work, and to get our fiscal house in order. And again, I, I would uh, ask if the senator from Virginia has any uh, items to close. And if I just, not, uh, uh, I, no, I just hope that our, our colleagues, we can, we can uh, uh, get a number of our other colleagues to join us on this. This doesn't fall on a traditional Democrat, Republican uh, uh, lexicon. It is really about more future versus past. Uh, this is the future. It is a global competition. It's a global competition for talent. It's a global competition for ideas. It's a global competition for capital. This is where job creation is going to come. And I look forward to working with you and all of our other colleagues to make sure not only that we get the support here, but we get the support in the House. We get this bill passed. And with that, I thank uh, the presiding officer and thank my good friend, the senator from Kansas. Mr. President, I thank the, the Senator from Virginia and uh, as well as Senator Coons and Senator Blunt for joining me today and I yield the floor.